Annyeonghaseyo, and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host, Donald. Tonight's feature is the seventh film in the East Side Kids series, Spooks Run Wild. But first, we're galloping along to the conclusion of Zorro's Black Whip. Last time, bandits opened fire on a pair of boots sitting under a curtain. Then Hammond realized that Barbara is the Black Whip because the writers had just given up. Vic literally fell into the cave of the Black Whip and did what he'd always dreamed of doing, put on Barbara's clothes. He went to rescue Barbara and got beat up. Then the bandits set off a landslide, collapsing the hideout with Vic and Barbara inside. And now, episode 10 of Zorro's Black Whip, Fangs of Doom. Welcome back. Tonight's feature is Spooks Run Wild. The East Side kids are taken from their home in the city to a summer camp to learn some skills and manners. However, there are reports of a monster killer in the area, and the kids find themselves in an old estate newly inhabited by Bella Lugosi. As I said at the top of the show, this is the seventh entry in the East Side Kids film series, but don't worry, you won't need any notes to get all caught up. The kids are various New York stereotypes, and the movie leans on that being enough without having to do actual jokes or make them characters. I do feel like I need to offer some caveats about this movie though, but I also feel like those are covered by It Was Made in 1941. To put it another way, there's a little person, as well as a black person in this movie, and their portrayals are, well, they certainly could have been worse. While that's a low bar, so few movies from that period clear it that it's worth mentioning. Also worth noting is the irony that while the black actor is playing a racist stereotype, he's also the most charismatic and memorable character in the movie. You'll see a lot more of what I mean in the second half, but let's end this preamble and get straight to tonight's feature, Spooks Run Wild. Tonight's feature is Spooks Run Wild, and I'm a little surprised at how many horror tropes are present here. I mean, the plot is basically kids being menaced by a serial killer while at summer camp, even if it does become a haunted house adventure real quick. Plus, I'm always gobsmacked when watching these old horror comedies to see how much Scooby-Doo borrowed from them. I always think of Scooby-Doo as establishing the tropes, not repeating them, but I dare you to watch the second half of this movie and not say, like yoinks, at some point. That said, hopefully you've had enough time to refill your Scooby snacks as we return to Spooks Run Wild. And that was Spooks Run Wild! Jeez, that flick just forgot its subplots about the nurse and the killer, didn't it? However, it was a juvenile comedy where one of the annoying kids straight up got shot. I mean, it's what we've always wanted but never dared dream. Plus, Bella looks like he's enjoying himself. Let's see what mysteries await us next week. You're invited to a celebration! We're getting all the decorations in place and trying to set the proper mood because we're going to play a game. This is a game in which you take one side and I the other, with death as the referee. That's right, it's the comedy classic about mystery and murder, Fog Island, and not some other movie, next time on the Busan Midnight Movie. Is anything important to you? Yes, solitude. That looks... Where did the shirt come from? Who, who even put it there? Last week it was a number four shirt, now it's a number three? Are, are we doing Sesame Street's laundry? What's going on here? Ah oh, well. If you enjoyed yourself, please... And as always, stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.